Hey everyone, welcome to episode 8 of Mountain Beast Mysteries. Today I wanted to talk about another older Bigfoot encounter, also one of my favorites. It's right up there with the Albert Osman case. And this is the Ape Canyon incident that happened really close to Mount St. Helens back in 1924, which coincidentally was the same year of Albert Osman's encounter. So, most of the information I found on this case comes from a guy named Fred Beck, and he was actually interviewed by Roger Patterson about this incident. So, legend has it, Fred Beck and four other guys, one of whom was his father-in-law, I believe. They were out prospecting near Mount St. Helens. And for like days leading up to this encounter, they were hearing weird noises, like hearing whistling. They were hearing sounds of like beating on like a chest, kind of like a, a great ape would do. And they were finding big tracks, like Sasquatch tracks that were 18, 19 inches long, like absolutely massive tracks. And the like during the day before the encounter, because the attack or the main incident happened at night, Fred and his father in law were down at this stream, and I can't remember what they were doing fishing or getting water or whatever. But they ended up seeing one of these creatures, and it was peeking out from behind a tree. And all of a sudden, the father-in-law starts opening up on this thing with his rifle. And I think he shot at it like three or four times. And the creature took off, and then he shot at it some more. And he swears he hit it, like even in the head with his rifle. And this thing took off, and it got away. And it was just, like its strides were huge. It was jumping around, like, it got away. They got back to their cabin later in the evening. And it wasn't till about midnight, like obviously they told the other guys like what they had seen and that they shot at this creature, but later that night around midnight they were awoken to like loud banging and something was throwing rocks at the cabin that they were in. And this cabin apparently was designed to withstand like heavy snowfall, so it was built really sturdy, but they swear there was like at least four or five of these creatures attacking the cabin like throwing large rocks at it boulders and actually like banging on the walls banging on the door trying to get in apparently they had to take like a one of the beams from the one of the bunk beds and brace the door closed with it i know it was a log cabin so in between the logs they had some chinking which you know it's that white stuff you see in between the logs apparently from the banging this stuff got knocked right out right out of the wall and one of the Sasquatch reached in through the chinking and like tried to grab an axe that was inside of the cabin. Now, you know, the story sounds crazy and like they said at times they could see three of them at once, like through the chinking in the cabin, they could look out and they could also shoot through the cabin. And that's another thing, like the whole time as they were being attacked, they were shooting at these creatures with their rifles and they could like, they could hear them walking around on the roof even and they were shooting rounds through the ceiling trying to scare them off but they claimed like the attack happened all throughout the night until daylight almost sometimes it would die down a bit and they'd stop shooting and the sasquatch would you know stop attacking but then it would pick up again and you know it'd just be a nightmare but yeah like in the morning the attack stopped and they kind of decided to each other like they weren't going to tell anyone that plan failed when the father-in-law went down to the ranger cabin and told them everything and they seemed to believe him because apparently they had had strange encounters and you know came across strange footprints in the area as well so to the rangers they didn't seem you know that they were too crazy they believed them but just a crazy crazy encounter if it's true you know and I have to say that because like when you're out in the woods with like four other guys and your main purpose out there is prospecting and trying to you know hit the big time and strike strike it rich it's not too crazy to believe that they could make a story up like that for the publicity you know you know if they didn't find any gold or anything maybe you know coming out with a story like that would be the way to go but 
Who knows? Crazy story happened the same year of the Albert Osman case, so that's very interesting as well. Uh, I'm not too sure about any of the other people that were there. I mean, like, there was multiple witnesses. But most of the information I found was from this Fred Beck gentleman and, you know, his interview with Roger Patterson. Yeah, another interesting story, so hope you like listening to it. And, uh, yeah, look into it more. Maybe there's more information out there. I just couldn't find it. But, yeah, share, subscribe, like, comment, and stay tuned for the next episode of Mountain Beast Mysteries. Thank you.